Legendary Man Cave, episode number 61. Are you looking to take your man game to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Legendary Man Cave with your host, Ryan Lopez and Rob Evans. Hey, Rob. Ryan Lopez. I understand you're feeling charitable today. Yeah, that, that charity got into my head. <laughs> okay. Um, as we plan to grow rich, it's a matter of, okay, what? let's not just be complete sharks. <laughs> and yeah. um, let's uh, talk about giving back a little. And uh, what will we start? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about you know uh, what 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 um, charities you know are close to your heart and why. All right, yeah, I mean, like I, I I'm a huge believer in in charitable giving, and yeah. it doesn't have to be something that you do when you are you know wealthy. No, you, you don't have no. to. You know, my thing is that you. Um, you should be giving of yourself in some way. If you can't afford, you know, money, of course, then you can donate your time. Yeah, a little and drummer boy style. Tons of stuff that you can do out there, and there's certainly tons of stuff that I do out there. Um, I've been doing for a long, long time, actually. Yeah. So, uh, so some of my favorite things um, are, um, and and. They're pretty addictive, actually, once you start getting into um, being involved in a charity of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've started uh, giving often to a, a charity called Donor C. That's, yeah. That's uh, Donor and S-E-E, -E, like you see where you're donating to. Okay, yeah, that, was that's, a, that was a brilliant idea. Yeah, and this guy, Greg Glyer, is uh, phenomenal. He's a free market entrepreneur, and he started a, uh, a, a organization that's a actual for-profit um, charitable organization. And oh. what you can do, and that's what, yeah, most people don't know that it's a for-profit. It's not a non-profit. He's not taking any kind of exempt, you know, tax status or anything like that. Wow. He, wow. uh, and he donates, uh, through the site. I think 95% of everything that's donated goes directly to the, um, to recipient? the recipient that you choose to donate to. Dang. And wow. which is way, way better than any other even nonprofit charity that's out there. I mean, some of them are just absolutely unbelievably hideous. Uh, I think, you know, I think if you donate to Humane Society, for example, 50% of their uh, profits go into advertising. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, and very little goes to the actual, you know, what you think it's going to. And Red Cross is is OK. I think something like 80 percent goes to, um, you know, what you think it's going to. And the other 20 percent, it goes to, you know, salaries and overhead and things like that. Yeah. So he's come up with a way to actually make a decent enough profit to make it worthwhile to have all the people working on this project on the back end to keep it moving to keep the you know the the parts moving and uh he can do it on five percent and um yeah and so he started this uh it's a very simple thing you download an app you go to the uh app store of your phone you know favorite whatever it is and uh you download donor c uh, app and I'll then you can flip through all of the uh, campaigns, campaigns and, and everything and these are uh relatively vetted campaigns i mean there's nothing in there that's like a, a scam or a sham or anything like that yeah um they're they're mostly uploaded by specific people that are in the areas is that the, is that that's the one where the grandmother carried the his, the granddaughter to school and finally got a wheelchair Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For like she, three years or something like that. Something like that. Uh, yeah. The, she, the little day? girl had a, a trouble walking, and um, and it may be something that's fixable, and that may be the next step in that that campaign. Campaign yeah. is that the the little girl gets to see a doctor, and then it takes X amount of money to fix whatever the problem is. She's not um 
you know, she she has some movement in in her legs, but she, yeah. she it's just she can't she just can't walk, and it's like a, about a mile to the school. Yeah. So now that she has a uh, wheelchair, and and again, it's like okay, so you see a video, you have an explanation of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And and what it is they're asking for, and then you have this countdown. So if it's like four hundred and fifty dollars to buy this little girl a wheelchair, you can fund the whole thing yourself if you wanted to. Yeah. Or you can put it at, you know twenty five dollars towards that, and as soon as you hit twenty five dollars, the little thing ticks down, and takes twenty five dollars off the total. You know, so to- toward the goal, toward the whole four hundred and fifty dollar goal. Oh, twenty twenty minus five so you- percent, right? Uh, ninety five percent of it. Well, I think what happens is that it's it's probably four hundred dollars oh, or something to to get the wheelchair to the little girl, and then it's just at part of the campaign total is that's that's smarter five five yeah. percent. So you actually see uh what your, the, your full, the amount. full amount going toward no hidden all of that uh, no hidden fees. That's ju- I was just about to say that. <laughs> like, I'm about to sell this brother on this right now. If he doesn't join, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> no. Yeah. So. Oh, oh my god. So yeah, I mean they 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 figure it out and um and then and then you get to see once the campaign is is funded, they they will put a video or, or pictures of the little girl holding thank you signs or whatever the case may be, so you can see that this little girl got the wheelchair um they they've done this with so many different types of campaigns all around the world i think they're in 130 countries now and wow yeah it's it's pretty incredible but it started started in uh in africa and uh, a lot of the earlier campaigns were like in malawi and and the places like that and you still see uh, a lot of these you know areas and it could be something as simple as a family uh uh, their their goat died on the farm, which yeah, is a huge deal. Yeah, that's crippling to a family. They need a new goat. Okay, a two hundred and fifty bucks. That's all they need. I mean, you literally, if you wanted to, go on there and fund entire campaigns by yourself. Exactly. And some of them are a little bit more extensive. Well, like yeah. um, there is an orphanage, and it was in stages. And the first stage was groundbreaking, uh, you know, breaking ground and leveling, uh, right? leveling and yeah. doing all the foundation work. And that was like seventy five hundred dollars. They got the seventy five hundred dollars. They they did all that work and they showed all these great videos and pictures of the thing being built. Then the next phase were the walls and the um, the roof. And then the next phase was the interior. The next phase was like furnishing. So it came it broke down in like four or five different phases. And by the end of it, it was like a you know something like you know thirty five thousand dollars. But it's housing twenty four orphaned young men. Okay. And allowing them to be there Is with it- their families, not not with not the families living there, but close to their families that couldn't support them. I mean, we're talking. I'm not talking about their immediate family i'm talking about like you know their their distant relatives or cousins things like that yeah yeah yeah. so just so we're clear about what's what's going on and so and they're able to stay with their friends near their friends in this in the school and and all this stuff and 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 this stuff is all all over the place um so anyway you can find tons of stuff and it's super addicting because it is so easy you type in uh, the amount that you want to, you find a campaign, you just type in an amount that you want to give and you hit go and it funds it. And, you know, and it's that easy. Your c- credit card is connected to it. So, you know, I've been doing that for months and months and months, like over a year now. Okay. And yeah, and it's, it's pretty addictive. Uh, and and it's, it's really nice to see that that money is actually going to these causes. So it's a brilliant idea because yeah. you give to so many different organizations and nonprofits and stuff. You don't really know where your money goes. You don't see the direct impact of what yeah, your like money whole, is doing. Like the whole Sally Struthers is like, um, oh god, like, <laughs> Sally Struthers. You know that, that whole bit it, it kills me. It's like, okay, how much money does it need to get that kid some food? I've been looking at this kid for three years now. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's like, and she's getting a hell of a lot bigger. Yeah, she's not hurting. 
And so, so yeah, I love the the South Park episode of <laughs> where she turns into like Job of the Hut. She's like eating all the kids' food, and and like they're all starving, and they're just like her slaves and stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so bad, like, but it's so funny at the same time. Oh yeah, Matt and Trey are just it is awesome. Um, <laughs> so, um, another charity that I'm very uh, involved with is. Um, Involving veterans. I think you yeah. know I've been doing this since about 2011, I think. Uh, I'm okay. the uh, entertainment manager for the Veterans Independence Day celebration at the uh, VA in Long Beach, California. Yeah. And so my job is uh, coordinating all of the entertainment that happens on this day. So we put on this huge um, event every year. It's a, a, a barbecue, entertainment uh, fun and games, just stuff for the whole family. And, uh, we feed and entertain somewhere close to in the vicinity of about 3000 veterans and their families every year. Wow. Yeah. And so that's a huge one to me. That's mostly my time. I do donate some money to that, but it's mostly just my time on on that particular one. Yeah. Time and efforts. Yeah. And, um, there is, um, Several charities that uh, I've I've dealt with on and off, um, kind of helping out from time to time. Um, one of them was uh, I I designed a uh, um, uh, what was called the Hip Hop School of Arts. Yeah, I remember that in uh, Pomona, California, and it was a, a friend of mine who uh, is a, a really famous uh, kind of b-boy from back in the day, like the 80s, you know? Drop <laughs> and, the name, man. Yeah, his name is uh, Little Caesar, mm-hmm. and, uh, excuse me, Little Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> and, Not to uh, be confused with that pizza joint. Yeah, pizza and, joint. you know, he's he was, uh, he, like, I guess, held the uh, world record for head spinning. He's one of those guys, and yeah. uh, strict b-boy, he was with a crew called the Air Force Crew, I believe. And uh, anyway, he was very, very famous. Still is, actually. He does. He flies all over the place and does um, um, judge, you know, he d- judges stuff. And he's been to Euro- European countries, uh, Asian countries. And because it's still very popular uh, doing that type of um, breakdancing B-boy type stuff. And so um, he, that, unfortunately, kind of within a year kind of folded that it just it just kind of couldn't couldn't be um it wasn't just wasn't sustainable uh, monetarily unfortunately we just couldn't get uh, enough people involved to uh, keep it going and so um so it lasted about a year (laughs) that was very unfortunate because we a lot of us put a lot of effort and time into uh, i did all the design work for it of course that was my my thing. And, uh, I even went there and spent a lot of time doing a lot of the, uh, construction and building and uh, painting and all that other stuff just to get this thing up and running. And it was a gorgeous place when we got it up and running. It was amazing. So for that to have folded so quickly, it was, uh, very heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Very heartbreaking, but you know, I can imagine. you can only do so much. Uh, so, but, um, but yeah, so uh, there, and there's just so many. God, I can't. You know, it's hard to. Yeah, you know, maybe a bunch of other ones will probably come up uh, as we're talking. But um, really, I mean, I think the the point that you would like to make and that I would like to make is that you know, um, it you can be as uh, in any position, um, but if you are trying to make something in your uh, for yourself in your life it's also helpful to step back sometimes and and help out other people because you know you never know actually where that's going to lead um first of all so there's there's possibilities where you know you think your life is going in one direction and you're building towards something and then all of a sudden you kind of fall in love with something else and that can be your new uh, thing, your new goal. So, I mean, there's so many people that are, uh, that have done that who are involved in a lot of these charities and, um, and just, 
also keeping you grounded is is uh, exactly. one of the most important things to you know because whether or not you're super successful or not or you're gaining success or you're just starting out with a new idea it's it's really important to stay grounded and in in reality because you know it's i think it's easy to get off track uh, on that because you're so focused on you and your things and what you're doing and everything is so um you know, has so much meaning for you. It's so, you know, um, I, I'm losing the word that I want, but oh, like hyper focused. Yeah. Well, when you're hyper focused uh, and everything's vision. about, about you, it's, oh, yeah, narcissistic. everything's, you know, but not so, not narcissistic in a, like a clinical sense. All consuming. Yeah. I mean, it really, it, it just, it, when you when you when you're so into what you're doing it's yeah. easy to forget about the important things in life and that can include just family yes you know very very much so 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 it's important to have other structures outside of what you're doing to help you stay grounded and 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 you know uh, and in in society in community you know because exactly. you just can't uh, you know it it didn't it doesn't work otherwise. You know, you can't do yeah. everything by yourself. At some point you have to rely on community, on that same community that you're working with on all these other projects sometimes. Yeah. And it, um and so yeah, it's important to be part of that community and maintain that um sense of kind of communal obligation. Exactly. Um I'm I'm setting up uh a couple of things, a couple of projects, um endeavors that I want to make sure, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my thing is, I know I need to get involved, okay? And there's not an excuse, it's just I know I need to do it. And I'm, I, I, it rubs me wrong because I know what I want to do, but it's a matter of getting these, <laughs> getting the inertia off some big projects. Um, but I know, like you said, if I don't have the, the the resources, I do have the time and energy, and I really need to figure figure out something with charity, some some charity that I can get behind. Okay, so you know, you know, as any time you have a question, you just say, "Hey, what do you think?" You know. <laughs> well, and it doesn't have to be this huge grand gesture either, and it doesn't have no, to be no, no. over a period long period of time. It could literally be just okay. One day, I am going to go out and feed the homeless. Duh, you know, that's exactly. simple. And there's, uh, there's charities that do that. I just, uh, partly got involved. I haven't, I haven't gotten actually involved yet, but I'm going to be donating probably every month. There's, uh, it's called, uh, I think it's called Feed LA. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, this, this woman who put together a, um, uh, a charity to feed the homeless people in South Central LA. And she gets a big group of people together every month, the last Sunday of every month. And uh, she cooks and wow. puts together um, meals. And, and these are hot meals. She's actually cooking, you know, um, things for them. Uh, so it's not just like sack lunches. Didn't she or get like, like some that. backlash like the last time she did this? Um, she was down on San Pedro. No, yeah, no, no, okay. no. I don't think so. Okay. No. So um, got a lot. It got a bunch of trouble for doing something like feeding the homeless. Well, yeah. You know, it's just one of those things where uh, if you set up organi organized things, uh, yeah, the the <laughs> lovely uh, government will. Sometimes yeah. get involved in like fixing in, the street, Domino's Pizza fixing the street. Well, they had a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's all under the guise of safety, but really, what it comes down to is that you know, a government at all levels does not want private enterprise showing them up, and well, and because they show them up every day, all day, anyway. Well, and so if they didn't. It's lose, unfortunate. If they didn't lose the money from the um, California Redemption. <laughs> maybe they could afford it. Well, you know, well, it is, it is what it is, you know, but the, the more to the point is that, you know, uh, this is something that is, has been going on for about three years now and she's been doing it for oh, three years. LA? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. And she uh, she started just by herself. She actually... Ooh. Yeah, I know. She, can you imagine? She just decided that she's going to put together some lunches, and she went out at, at night by herself in South Central LA, and we were just feeding home. Is she people. from there? Yeah, she's she is. I am too, so, but uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's where I'm a wuss, okay? I'm, I could become the next super billionaire right okay um i am not going to uh uh a, a disease ridden country in africa but then again my problem with going to africa is i have a big problem with the notion of being eaten by like a hyena <laughs> or a lion you know okay i'm from south central la seriously born and raised mostly raised there and okay, I might get hit by a drive by. <laughs> I may lose it in a car accident. I'm a black man. I may lose it to a heart attack, you know. I a hyena. <laughs> I I didn't come this far for a hyena. I, I, I think you probably have uh, more of a problem with the mosquitoes than the yeah, like, larger wildlife. Yeah, but you know, so I don't have a big urge to go to Africa. I don't care how <laughs> sexy Black Panther made it look. Well, then you can just go on to no. Donor C and donate. That's what I'm saying. I go and donate. Like, if I got super rich, like, okay, I'm donating. I'm funding all this shit and just go from one to another. I'm more apt to do that. Like, like yeah. Bill Gates is, has bigger balls than me because him, him and his wife go, yeah, let's go to, you know, some in Nigeria or whatever. And I'm like, you're a billionaire, dude. And he just doesn't have that same mental dent in his head i guess that i do about yeah about, well okay really you gotta go yourself no you send people when I mean, you get to a certain point but that's just me i'm just i'm a wuss that way but um south central at night no mine would be a breakfast <laughs> How about a I, nice I, brunch? You're like I'll I'll do a lunch. It's some better be up, you know. It ain't do, and it's not it's, it's, it's not a racial thing, you know. I wouldn't go to the Mexican area and do it. I wouldn't go to the white area and do it. I wouldn't go to the black area. Like no. Oh, well, what can we say? She was very brave. Yeah, and it came it came off of uh, a, a moment of desperation in her life. Her her father was uh, just just a, a little aside as you like to say okay. uh her father was uh unfortunately picked up uh, about three years ago just before all this uh, started with her um fidelity and um and her father even though he was a resident of the united states he wasn't a citizen and he was a construction worker who traveled uh for work um, okay so he worked on very large you know, not, not buildings, but like complexes, like, so, you know, like maybe he worked for, um, a development company that did, you know, 500 homes in this huge area at a time. So there's a okay. lot of work for a lot of a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So he happened to be in Texas. Well, as it turns out, even though you have federal uh, laws, uh, uh, for, you know, immigration, evidently states have their own leeway in terms of how they want to prosecute and, and do things. And so, uh, when he was there, uh, working, he got picked up, uh, by ICE and was thrown in prison. And wow. in okay. Texas and a detention center. And mm -hmm. uh, he's been in there and he's still there to this day. He's been there for over three years. Wow. And uh, he hasn't had any kind of trial. He hasn't had any kind of, um, um, uh, you know, he hasn't been deported. He hasn't, and nothing's happened. He's just in a holding pattern. And the reason they do this, of course, is because for every person man woman child they in, in, incarcerate uh for this they get paid by the federal government so it's a cash cow they're not going to let these yeah. people out because they are making a ton of money off of this and so anyway and long a, story because, short because he's not a u.s citizen he doesn't have the right to a speedy trial long story short he's still there and um they've been you know trying to get you know take care of it legally things keep changing of course so you know as as the law keeps changing it becomes uh defense you know lines of defense become obsolete and all these other things so it's uh it's very unfortunate um but with having no ability to do anything 
uh, about it, she decided that she needed to focus her energy somewhere else, and that's why she started this uh, this organization. So, anyway, what uh, what I'll be doing is um, offering um, you know a, a monthly. Um, donation of, of food, whatever it is. Um, they put out a list every month, uh, of what, what they, they, need. What they need and okay. yeah. And then they just take donations and, um, and then, you know, they take care of all the volunteers take care of cooking the night before or the day before and, um, and then putting all the, putting everything together and then going out and delivering. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, yeah, I heard, I heard about, I heard the name. I didn't do, do the research. Um, um, once a month, you say. Did you say last Sunday? I'm sorry. Last Sunday of every month. Yes. Okay. Wow. Memory. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Makes um, it easy. Last Sunday. Okay. Well, you're gonna be gone this one. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm not. Well, I'm not. I'm not a volunteer at this point. I will be volunteering food. So. <laughs> yeah. I will be yeah. helping them to procure whatever it is on their list of things that they need. So she only goes to one location, or does she move around? Well, well it's it's Car- all it's all South Central. So it's her 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 area, her home, basically. So it's all around there. I don't know. I don't know what the geographic area is. You'll have to ask her. Wow, I wonder what I would do in that for that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. So it's like, and, and there's also nothing wrong with volunteering your time to get something out of it. You know, there's seriously, I mean, there's there's you can go online. There's places where you can volunteer your time to get like a free Disneyland ticket. You know, f- to go get in for a day. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that either. Just freaking go. You know, I knew a family who used to go out and and. uh uh, uh, work with a, a church in uh, in in L.A. somewhere, feeding the homeless on Thanksgiving, and they would do it every year. So you know stuff like that. It's just one time a year. Just you know, get get yourself and your family out there and kind of do something for somebody else. It really does set um, certain pre- pre- precedents in your life and uh, gives you a certain mindset that I think is actually pretty important to uh maintaining your own success yeah um it's so it's the matter of um the way i see it um not not only does it keep you humble not like i have a problem with that at all but the way i see it it'd be a matter of okay let's look outside ourselves with something that's not in my immediate circle because I'm a I'm a big proponent of okay, focus on your circle. Everybody fo- focus on their own circle of loved ones, and life would be better, a lot better. Because you're not you're not distracted. You have a reason to you know um, have that energy. But at the same time, there are things going on around your circle. Sure. And well, your immediate it, circle isn't always in need of something. <laughs> well, no, but you know, and so well. Uh, well, but but your greater circle, you know. Yeah, you, but you have your whole, you yeah. know, and you got to pick your cause. And for me, it's kind of weird cuz you know, back in the day when I was a kid, way back then, um I was an outside kid, you know. Weekends meant outside roller skating, football. There's a game called One Bounce. Did I ever tell you about that? I think I no. did. Okay. Um football was tag football in the street, right? Okay, that's that's a given. Then you had murder ball, sack the quarterback, smear the queer. You play probably played one version of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, but what one bounce was, it was somebody would you know call batter and one would be a catcher and one would be a pitcher. Everybody else is outfield and you all right, outfield, yeah. So you would pitch and hit the ball like baseball style, but it would be a stick, not a bat, not a bat. And so. If you caught it from out of the air or after one bounce, you got to be the batter. Sum it up. Um, marbles and chess and Stratego. It was always outside doing something. Um, playing tag, you know, whatever. So my 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 heart always goes out to kids who are ill and they don't have that. You know, they can't go run and play. They, you know, cancer or whatever the case is. And and I think there's something wrong with that missing immortality of a being a child um 
Because, you know, you, you fall down, you get back up, you know? Yep. <laughs> back in the day where you look, you see a kid do it today, you're going to go, wow, if I could do that again <laughs> once more in my life, not worry about that, that full speed spill and just get right back up. I mean, um, so I know that when I um, get my uh, distribution uh, company up with the over, with the, with the overage, whatever, whatever the overstock, I'm going to be doing a lot of donations from that. And then um, I'm thinking of doing a, a, an endeavor where I send, because it'll be comics as well, always going to be comics. So I was like, okay, who do I give it to? Do I send it over to the troops? Heroes for heroes type of thing. <laughs> or do I uh, keep it local or whatever the case may be? I got to figure that out. But um, as far as donating my time and energies, I know I need to figure that out and just, like you said, get out and do it. Put it on my list to to do some research. See what see what moves me. Okay? Because I got to be motivated. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Sure. No, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Got to pick something that moves and inspires. Yeah. So... It won't be gender based. It won't be racial based. Because, in my viewpoint, that's just bad. I mean, that's not a cause. A cause is something that's beyond coincidence or things outside of. You know, a cause for me is something that's beyond gender and race. Okay. 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 So, um, I, I don't know. They just they just tend to go bad. Because they're so f- hyper focused on cha- being a champion for whatever that gender or race is, that they lose f- they lose track. Okay, so kids. Okay, cool. Um, well, if it's always for the kid. I mean, that's one of the best uh, arguments to get anything passed, especially in politics. You say it's for the kids. I mean, who's no. who's, who's going to argue against that? You, you'd uh, you be know, like the fucking the devil. Kid. It, well, it depends on what. They, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it depends on what it depends on. It depends on what they're trying to do for the kids. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody's I, going into politics, just remember that, folks. It's always for the kids because anybody who argues against you is like the fucking devil. I guess I got. What's the matter? Devil. Don't you like kids? You hate yeah. kids. Yeah. What do you got against kids? Yeah, but when they're trying to take your gun because some some one kid did some bullshit. Or some adult did some bullshit, and you're like, wait a minute. But it's for the kids. Yeah, we got to protect the kids. My gun is then harming a kid in Virginia. Yeah, my gun's protecting my kid. Well, I don't have a kid, but. Yeah, it's like, so wait I a minute. I, can't make that I, I lose my protection because this asshole that you knew was psycho. <laughs> you know, you How just, many times did the FBI visit this guy? Yeah, <laughs> will we FBI have him under surveillance? Put a bullet in his ass if he's that dangerous. But, um,. Yeah, but no, I, I hear what you're saying. So you want to do something with kids, involving no, kids, and that's you know, great. You know, no, but what I'm going to do, I'm putting it out there in the universe, like you know, like we said we would. I'm going to put some time and find a charity that's more than that. You know, if I can find one that's more than that, and because it's easy to say for the kids, and yeah. if I because once I get the media company going, I have enough surplus where I'll be a hero to the kids, and. That's cool, but it's not growth. Okay. It'd be nice to find something where I look and go, wow, this, like Feed LA. I would, I'm not doing it at night. There's just no fucking way. Um, <laughs> because I didn't get out of the hood to get killed in the hood. And you know, sorry, or beat up or jacked. And then I'm angry. Okay. <laughs> now the hyena is just going to eat my ass because you're not fighting off a hyena. First of all, you're not fighting off one hyena. They can play unpack. I mean, you'd be lucky to survive a dingo attack, let alone a hyena attack, right? Unless you can climb up a tree. A dingo ate my baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> it's okay. That was a long time ago, actually. It's, it's, you know, that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> the dingo didn't eat my baby. It's just funny. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but L- L.A., you know, feeding the homeless um, is a great endeavor. I mean, I'll make sure we'll link to that in the show notes. But I'm not apt to do it. Um, no, because fair it, enough. It's real easy for me to go. 
wait, they broke my window. And it'd be in, invariably, it'd be the same motherfuckers we're trying to feed. Well, you so, know, they've they've got a lot of help already. The the yeah. majority of the stuff that they need is just supplies and exactly. stuff like that. So, so those types of donations are you know, what they're looking for. And they do publish, I believe, also on the website and on their Facebook page, uh, yeah. the list of everything that they need. Yeah. Um, every, so, yeah. So uh, we can definitely, on the show notes page, have links to those things. Definitely. And that's, um, that's, that's really donor C and everything mm-hmm. like that. Oh, for sure. Um, and so... Don't get me wrong, I I applaud her because you know it's always good to see somebody who goes, man, that's they got more balls than I do, in her courage, I should say, on her case, yeah, like like you know Larry Flint, you know I would have folded like you can, sorry, I would probably would apologize and would have went into a hole, or I, I would have got mad and said fuck you guys and be just like Larry Flint, but I I I know I need to do something and. It's one of those things, I, but I want to start something. But the best thing you said tonight, of all things, is like a for profit. So I'm not worried about qualifying. Right. No, okay. you don't have to be a non profit organization to be a, a charitable organization. And, it has nothing to do with that, actually. And, yeah, and so that's that's what that's what I like about what you said. Um, I my mind, you know, I wasn't using it improperly, like chauvinist. <laughs> but i like, wait, you said, as soon as you said that, I was like, wow, because like, that's right. You don't have to worry about qualifying. If you just say we're for a profit and then don't make a profit, <laughs> you run it like Amazon did for so many years. Um, just run it in the red. Fuck it. Yeah. You know, we should get Gret on to talk about what he's up to. Cause he's got some other things going on besides donor C. Well, it's not besides donor C. He's got a lot of things that are, uh, like an extension of donor C that people you might know be interested him? in. I know of him and I know how to get a hold of him. And okay. Yeah. I was about to say. Like, and I donate to his fucking site, so he better talk to me. <laughs> no, okay. Get the word out. <laughs> no, he's a very cool, cool, yeah, cool guy. Do, very nice guy. Yeah, and no one, I know that he would come on and do it for sure. Yeah. And we, we need to start something up. Like, I don't know. It, it got to be something cool. Yeah, well, I guess we we could start some of it, but I don't mind just being like there's so much out there already, and there's so much that you know, so many uh, different charities that do need help. Yeah, already. Yeah, and so unless you come up with something that's near and dear to your heart, that there's just no real charity um, our, focused on that, then or if all the charities focused on it are pieces of shit. True. Um, and so that's one thing that you can kind of. The other thing you can do is just piggyback on. On, on to you know some of these newer uh leaner um quicker better um things you know one of the things about uh uh donor c is that they started doing medical um things oh. and Ooh. uh yeah they and you can find it online too um uh, uh red cross was having some choice words to say about donor c trying to get them to fold. You know, fold and you know maybe try and start some political action against donor C uh, because suddenly they realized they were giving uh, getting major competition. They Aww. were able to. I know. Aw. So like people in need. When Aww. you when you fund uh, medical needs through the Red Cross, it could take several weeks to get somebody the care and and help that they need. Uh, yeah. When you're funding them through donor C. They get it immediately the next day within 24 hours yeah, and they're waiting. funded and they can get the proceed- medical procedures that they need, especially when it's an emergency situation. Okay. I got so oh, so I wonder, I wonder they're if they got... far better, far faster uh, than any of these other you know established charities out there. So that's another aspect to doing it in this fashion. Yeah, because you you wait, you're literally waiting on the money once it's there done. Exactly. But I wonder if the guy there was a guy with American Ninja Warrior last season, who was looking for kidneys for these two Native American kids. Because I don't know if you heard about it. His his daughter was a newborn, and she needed a kidney. Mm-hmm. And this woman saw the story on American Ninja Warrior and donated a kidney. Not a relative, just saw it and said, "Here, take the kidney. The girl's, you know, kid needs to live. I have two. And so he's like. His thing is, his T-shirt is, you know, please donate, share your spare. I think is the is the is the slogan. 
Okay, so going back to so your thing it, about fuck that shit. <laughs> okay. I, I don't. I, I, I. That's one thing that I can never do. I'm sorry. I, I will do a lot of things for a lot of people. Oh, and, oh yeah. But, I'll, no, you know, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. My my I'm, organs are kind of off limits until I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I so I'm it. not using them anymore. I, I just my thing is I wonder if he knows about the donors, the donors for the for well, the help. Uh, it, well, I don't know if it can help. I it, hope it, that more and more people will find out about this and start getting involved in it because yeah, we're, we're going to do is, our part to help. Yeah, it is really truly one of my favorite platforms, one of the best platforms I've ever seen to actually donate money. Because you, you yeah. know it's legit. You can see it going to exactly to the projects that you're donating to, to the people who you're donating to. It's very specific. It's very direct. Yeah. It's like it's, it's as close as you can get to actually handing somebody uh, the money directly. Yeah. We're, I don't know if we were together, but I remember watching a, a seminar. I, it was, I was streaming a seminar. And the guy, it was a guy saying, what's the best thing you can give to these charities? You know, like the people need, and he goes money. Well, maybe it was a Tom Woods. I forget. Okay, and he was like, the best thing you can give is money. You know, forget blankets and quilts and uh, send money. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they need is money. <laughs> no, because they need they know what they need most. They yeah. just need the uh, the ability to get it. Exactly. So sending a bunch of old blankets and clothes and things like that to Are um you? no this is probably uh when right. you, when you're talking they were probably talking about I think it, it was the Tom Wood show and it was talking about the the devastation that happened in uh, because of the hurricane in Puerto Rico I it believe could, it could have been. Right. And so, yeah, because a lot of people were sending uh, all these extra clothes, clothes and blankets and shoes. Like we, we got tons of that down here. We can buy that. That's not that. First of all, um, you know, the the amount of money and, and effort it takes to move all that shit all that way. Yeah. And is so insane. Of- and then distributing it is a whole nother. Di- so, no, money is absolutely the absolute best thing that you can ever give somebody that is in need because the stuff is there it's just a matter of being able to afford to get to to get your hands on it okay yeah um what was i about to say so Uh, that's that's what that's what that and that's that's mostly when you're talking about like emergency situations like my mom makes quilts right and so she's part of various quilting guilds and groups and stuff like that and uh, one of the, I think it was Katrina hit, and he said, "I'm making, I'm making some quilts, some quick quilts from extra fabric, and get it to them through the Red Cross." It took forever. It was, and the Red Cross was like demanding, "It can't be this way, it can't be that way, and we got to get it by this time." So you have like twenty, you know, um, aging women busting their ass making these quilts, and then it took forever to get there. It was like, is the are they? It, and, you know, I was like, hey, did you get any message from a thank you or anything like that? You know, and like, <laughs> and, he, and she looks at me and she goes, I'm not gonna get a thank you. You made a quilt for this person, you know. I don't know who I made it for. Okay, but they know who made well, it. Yeah, you know. Well, it's just one and, of those things where, yeah, I but mean, it took so long to get there. It was like, are they still in need for quilts? You know, it, it was just. The Red Cross is any f- well, and people is, have to understand slow. is that look, it's it's nice, it's it's a nice gesture, yeah, but it's not necessarily helpful like you think it's going to be helpful. Yeah, that's and, all. Yeah, and the thing is, it, it's a great gesture, and I'm sure you know people. It might have been a, it might have been even better if she had said these quilts I'm donating to be sold to raise money to send to. Yeah, that might have fire cell. That's what I'm saying. Okay, guys, we need quilts. You know, we're gonna make the quilts. You know, with your extra fabric, no, no restrictions. Just make a quilt. We're gonna have a fair or a you know killer yard sale or yard sale. You know, at an event center or a uh, community center or a church or whatever, and say all the proceeds, all proceeds go to, go to Katrina. You. Yeah, see that or would be or whatever. That would be. Uh, far more, um, uh, you know, advantageous for everybody involved because the uh, charitable organizations that need the money to keep their operations running are getting the money. The the 
talent is staying local, the product is staying local, and the people buying get to know and meet the people who are creating the product, meaning suddenly that there's potential for future patronage to, uh, to these crafters. Okay, so... So when you think about it that way, and there's nothing wrong with thinking about things that way, by the way, this is not well, antith- antithetical to charitable giving. The point is, is that had the that particular situation been carried out in a more proper manner, yes. it would have been advantageous for everybody naturally. Yes. Not from a greedy standpoint, not from a I'm going to think about myself standpoint, not from it would have just naturally worked out better for everybody. Okay, my last question on this, because the thing is, you know, we're at time. Um, who, for sake of discussion, let's say I wanted to organize that because I can get behind that, you know, relief, you know, crafts for relief or whatever you want to call it, right? Okay. Um, who do you contact to give the money to? Do you know? Well, no, you would have to set up that uh, ahead of time. You would, you would, it, you, you would probably set up a, um, a, a situation where you're, you're going to give to one or two or a small handful of different, uh, organizations. Everybody knows ahead of time where the money is going to go to. And they all agree that it's a worthwhile charity, a worthwhile situation. And then they get involved, do their crafts and then have this craft. A sale or something like that yeah and so um yeah you wouldn't you know it's not a matter of like you know figuring out who to give it to you all that's figured out ahead of time yeah i, I just didn't know who you give it to because you know well, it'd be like, up to you you're yeah. if you're setting the thing up you it'd be one of your favorite charities that would go to these disaster zones could it be disaster zones it could be children's hospital you want to do things for children um all those things Okay. See, the reason I don't bring up children necessarily, although Donor C is mostly around uh, children, okay. uh, is because there's so much out there for children already. Yeah. And I, and so, I mean, it I, is it what I think about. you know? I of course. And I that's know. fine. There's nothing they, wrong they, with they, that. It's yeah, just personally, yeah. there's so much out there that needs attention. Yeah, so attention. that's what I'm saying. It's growth, you know. And the thing is... You know, with this talk, I think the best thing came out of it for me was don't worry about being a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. Two, um, you know, a, a affirmation, a reaffirmation of like money, you know, do something to generate money and, and then go from there. And I don't know, I may start something, I may not on that with that notion because that's universal, it's global. Well, and again, uh, just not to try and bring something else into it, but it's it's an important factor. Okay. There's a lot of business models that work around uh, charitable giving. So you have Tom Shoes, for example, who donate shoes to um, third world countries for every uh, something like, I think it started off with every pair of shoes that they sell, they donate a pair to uh, uh, children in, in foreign countries, in third yeah, world countries. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, you have uh, Lululemon, I believe, who uh, donates a lot. You have um, just so many um, I'm trying to think. There, I mean, there's so many um, businesses out there that are that are arranged around charitable giving. Um, so you know, um, uh, the and then there's there's also um, businesses that get involved directly with specific organizations, like uh, uh, this woman. Uh, her name is Nan. Um, I can't remember her name. I met her. Uh, she runs something called um, oh, Rain Something Forest. Or anyway, what she does is she her organization goes down to the uh, Amazon, Peru, and that whole area, wow. and and works with indigenous people to purify their water because their water system has been polluted by, you know, uh, all deforestation. the deforestation and, and industrialization and everything that's been going on there. So these people are getting sick and they're, and they're having a lot of problems. So she 
created simple solutions to purify the water using very cheap, you know, products, PVC piping, sand, things that you can find there, um, yeah. natural things. And she not only sets up water pur- purification systems for them, she teaches them how to maintain the water purification systems, how to test the water and how to do uh, how to basically maintain everything themselves and be self su- sufficient once she sets them up. Yeah. I and think- she parlayed that into uh making schools and things like that for the children there as well. Yeah. I think I saw the the water systems those like like um uh modified um 2 liter bottle no, these are like, uh, these are bringing water in from long distances. So they pipe them in. So they bring lots and lots of uh, PVC pipe with them connecting to their water source, bringing the water, purifying it along the way through a series of, of awesome. natural sand filters and things like that. And then it shows up in their village. So it's almost like a, a, a low tech version of running water for them that they've yeah. never had before either, by the way. Yeah, that's. Um, and (laughs) so, (laughs) so yeah, so they set up like, you know, things like showers. So whenever they do a school, there's a, a, a shower and, um, bathroom facility connected with it that is used for, um, better hygiene for the entire village. And so, and then, you know, again, it's just one of those things where it, they're, they're bringing in these real basic technologies, these easy ways of, of, um, filtering water and kind of parlaying those into education, into um, hygiene, into all these other things. And there's a lot of companies out there that deal with water. There's a water purification company um, in, in Pasadena that, that donates a lot of money to, um, to this venture. And um, gosh, I wish I can remember the name of the water (laughs) purification company. We'll put it up on the show notes and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, it's important that people know about these things because, you know, otherwise you would never, you would never realize that. So, and, and so these are things that are near and dear to these um, small companies hearts. And they, they really, they really focus their business model around their charitable giving. So anyway, just throwing it out there is that you can actually do that. That's not a, a, an issue at all. And, and, you know, you don't have to start a charity. You don't have to, um, you don't have to be a nonprofit. You don't have to be any of this stuff. You can literally just be a a business whose model is giving a, a percentage of your money to a specific charity and that's it. And that can be, you know, the, the extent to, you know, what you do for charitable giving. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's far cry more than, you know, a lot of people do. Yeah. But that's not to say, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to browbeat anybody. I mean, this is, no, we it? live in the most charitable country in the world, believe it or not. It's the United States is by far the most charitable country in the world in terms of um, charitable giving by individual people, not, not, you know, government charity <laughs> um so yeah no absolutely and and it's getting i think we're growing as a, a country is you know in terms of our um our charitable giving so yeah it's just one of those things that you know look you know you don't have to do it of course it's not like you know uh, we're just simply saying you know there's something more to it that when you get involved in some type of charity it changes you it changes your mindset it changes your um, outlook on life, on society, on everything. And that outlook affects every other aspect of your life. So whether you realize it or not, you're actually becoming a, a different person and having a different outlook and a different way of thinking. Your structure set is changing. And that is uh, in a lot of ways, an important structure to maximizing your own success. Yes. So, so it's just one of those things where, you know, there's a reason why people who are successful give to charities. It's not because uh, they're trying to become, uh, they're trying to get into the social graces of, of society or anything like that necessarily. And uh, a lot of the people who uh, do donate uh, are very quiet about it. 
You know, yeah. they're not they're not out there boisterously saying, "Hey, you know, I'm a good person. I donated to this, and look how awesome I am." So, you know, it really is um, something that you need to kind of understand. I think um, as you go forward with all of these things that we tend to talk about on the show these days, is that <laughs> you know <laughs> these. These are all kind of interconnected elements, and yeah. and there's a reason why these things come up, and the reason why we're talking about them. So, um, so just kind of consider it, you know, going out there, doing something different, seeing the world in a different way, yeah, uh, giving of your time, giving of your, um, your your labor, your hard earned money, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever you know, um, you find to be the best avenue. It's uh, it's more important maybe for you, then you realize, and it's certainly important to the person you're giving to or the group that you're giving to. Yeah. And help me look. So post what you give to in the comment section. Yeah. Post some of your favorite uh, charitable uh, contributions and things that you like to do. Uh, And uh, we'll definitely uh, enjoy reading those and interacting with you guys on that. And uh, well, we hope that you uh, kind of got something out of this show and that you, that you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll definitely catch you next time. Okay, people. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Legendary Man Cave with Ryan and Rob. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit LegendaryManCave.com, Facebook at Legendary Man Cave, and Twitter at Man Cave Legend. We'll catch you next time.